All right, so before we move on, let's take care of some cross-cutting concerns. So in this session, we're going to add uh, support for correlation ID, okay? I'll tell you about uh, how they're useful in just a minute, but let me add them now. So it's going to be added as a middleware, all right? So I'm just going to add it as a pre-middleware, all right? And there's one available off the shelf with... Uh, eco framework although we are not going to be using it and uh, we'll be creating our custom middleware here and that would also be kind of a revision on how to create a custom middleware all right so uh having said that let me save this now okay and let me run this command so the server is running on 8080 and uh sorry so let me show you something here right now. So there's no request made, okay? There, there are no headers here. And as soon as, as soon as I make the request against post with our JSON payload here right now, okay? So that's the only method that we have supported right now, okay? So as soon as I do send, it's sending me internal server error, which is kind of odd. Let me just come back here. Uh, it's unable to validate the project ID and I think that's because of the extra currency uh, character here. Okay, so when I do it again, now you can see that I've got the response, but uh, if you check out the header, there's another new header that is X request ID. That's been added to the request here, uh, to the response actually. So this is my response, all right? And it seems like it generated it afresh. It's kind of a random ID and it's going to track my request. So when my request is uh, flowing down to some other applications, it's going to carry this request ID to the other application as well. So that's, that's the purpose of that. And uh, let me show you another thing. So for example, if I just put the same request ID here, the same header name, all right, and this time I'll let me just give it some random ID, some just dummy ID. So when I send it now, it gives me a response and uh, headers value changes to Corona 123 for exactly what I passed here. Okay, so this is the correlation ID. Now, how, how does it help it? Uh, how does it help us? Well, uh, if we have an environment in our project where we have many microservices or many other web services that we call, internal web services, okay, internal to our project, but hosted on a different infra, taken care by a different team. So when you are calling a lot of such, in, uh, such microservices, it becomes difficult to actually have one common view across what is happening for one particular transaction, okay? So what Correlation ID helps me with is uh, it helps it passes this ID to the microservice that I would be calling so that when somebody wants to analyze how the request is passing and if you want to do it the easy way then you would have to find something that is common between both the both of these requests and that is this request ID okay so this request ID will be carried forward to the next request that I'll be calling and they'll also be passing it to other microservices. And that way, when I have a common system such as some logging system, for example, Splunk or Logzio, where such request uh, IDs can be logged optionally. And then I can have a single pane of view of what the request was doing across different services, okay? And that, that's an amazing thing to have because if I don't have this, then I have to actually map request that occurred in one system and I have to map it to a different system. And that kind of mapping becomes very problematic unless you have something that is common to identify in both of these requests. And that is going to be this request ID. Okay. Uh, although with uh, the middleware here that we have off the shelf, the ID that you get, the name of the ID is going to be constant. So you can't change this ID. Okay, uh, there's nothing you can customize here. So you get this one uh, ID and that's because if you check out here, okay, so if you check out this request ID method, 
it has this uh, header x request id which is being used and header request id is a constant so you can't reassign it and the framework doesn't give you a weight of reassigning it now why would you want to do that well that's because uh what if somebody else in your team is developing a microservice in a different language for example node.js that has different framework for example nest or express.js okay and uh, they don't support this out of the box right the, the same id or what if your team as a whole comes up with one particular id to be identified across all the microservices regardless of the language they are built in with one common name so there has to be a facility to actually give it a common name and that's what we are going to do right now okay so we are going to write a custom middleware here okay so let me just first of all define our constant here and that is going to be uh, core id core or let me just type it correlation id okay and i'm going to call it x correlation ID. So this is going to be the name of the header that I will be expecting from a microservice that is calling me and I'll be passing it to the microservice that I will be calling. Okay, so this header will be maintained across the project. Okay, kind of. Now we need to change this implementation. So first of all, I will remove this middleware and I'll replace, with, replace it with something called add co relation id middleware just the name of the function right we haven't defined that function yet so let's just do it now so it is add uh, let me just copy it because it's got double r and i'm likely to actually cause a mistake well now uh it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a middleware right so middleware has a particular signature and let me just go back uh, to the example that we were just seeing right now so again to revise so request id if you if you go to it so the signature of the middleware function is this so it accepts uh, uh, it accepts uh, a handler function and it returns a handler function okay so that's basically the signature so let me copy it here and we've seen this in previous sessions, right? This is not, nothing new to us. So let me just uh, copy it here in a different line maybe. And then let me just copy this name here. Okay. And uh, what we want to return is we want to return a handler func. And we know the signature of handler func. That's our product. Uh, signature as well right so we accept uh, accept a context and return an error right so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a function that accepts echo context and returns an error and inside this you call c dot next uh, let me just go back here so what they're doing is next c yeah so you return with next next which is a um, function here you call it and you pass it the context object so that's how you return from this function and your implementation code is going to be here so we are going to generate the correlation id here okay but first of all we are expecting a correlation id so somebody might be calling us and they would they could be passing us a correlation id so that's the one we want to use right because it's a distributed system in, and we want to keep using the same request id that got originated somewhere right so what we want to do is we want to actually get it from the request so request here is our method against this context that is here that we are returning it's going to be part of the same request and request has this header okay and header has uh, get method which gets you the header value and in our case the header value the key of the header is correlation id so we, we, we get it first we try to get it so if it is empty why am i using curly braces why am i using braces so if it is empty 
then we want to generate the ID okay we want to generate the ID else we just want to set it to the request we want to use the same ID in our request and response as well okay so what I'm going to do is request and header and set is another method and set accepts key and value so key is going to be correlation ID and value is going to be ID okay I also want to set it in the response as well okay so response and response also has a header but this time it's a method not a property and header has this set set method which accepts correlation ID and ID okay and now I want to generate a random number all right a random number of a certain length okay so how do I do it well uh, first of all uh, I'm just gonna have new ID here and I'm going to use the library called random and random is actually part of uh, the eco package itself okay uh, let me save this you can see that it's it's here random okay so I'm gonna be using that library uh, what it generates is this 12 is basically the length of uh, the ID right now I'm going with 12 ideally for a production code you should be going with a bigger size for example 20 or something but 12 is just fine for now okay and I'm going to just copy paste this code here and or I can do something very easy in fact I can do I can keep it here okay and I can uh, just have uh, what is this new idea string and I can do this so in that case this would be ID so if there is no ID we are going to generate the ID but if the ID is already present and if it's not empty then we're gonna set new ID to this ID okay and uh, then I'm going to set this to new ID both of them okay all right and I'm going to return the function as well okay so this thing right here it's now going to go away and that correlation ID has been added as a pre middleware okay so let me save this request now and everything should be just fine okay now let me see and make the request again so let me delete this one okay and let me see what happens now so I make the request and I get the correlation ID this time it's 12 digit all right but if I pass it Uh, okay if I pass it some value let me just pick up this value and let me just change let's say the last character which is L and if I pass it then it assumes that the value that was passed to it okay so by the way every time I create a post request to the products it's creating a new product but with the same payload now this might sound odd but that's totally valid because for example in a particular uh, in a particular shop or online retail store you got multiple products okay multiple physical products of the same type but they have different let's say RFID right so in in one particular mobile shop you can have two mobiles of the same company of the same brand everything same but you got two different pieces right and uh, but the only thing that is different is is RFID to each one is actually different because RFID is actually specific to a particular product so that's the kind of thing that we are doing you might actually say that how are we allowing the same product to be created twice well that is because we can have products of the same type and the same brand and, and the same vendor more than once right so that that's what we are doing here and that's why every time we create a product we are getting a list of new products and that's why we have the whole list of products now 
uh, from all the requests that we made so far okay so that was one good example that we learned today that is of how to implement a custom middleware and how to make use of the correlation id all right so i think this is helpful let me just uh, put a comment here right now so that this uh, yellow line goes away so correlation id is a request id unique to the request being made so it's unique to the request it's not unique to the application it's unique for every request so for every request it's going to be unique okay so thanks